Hello everyone, in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use Steam Networking in Godot 4. To get started, head over to Godot Steam Documentation. I will have this link to the description down below. Head down to Module Precompiles. These are modified versions of the Godot engine that has Godot Steam built into it. Select the multiplayer peer builds. This version implements Steam's networking into Godot's own networking system, so select that. And depending on your OS, download the Windows 64 or the Linux 64.zip. Sorry Mac users. Now once you have the downloaded, go ahead and extract it. For Windows users, simply open up the editor.exe. And for Linux users, use this command in your terminal to open up the file. And once you open up the editor, in the top right corner, it should say custom build. Now either open up your project or create a new project. In your main scene, create a new node. Let's just call it Steam. Create a new script on that. If you have watched my other Steam tutorials, this will be very familiar to you, however you don't need to. In the ready function, type OS dot set environment this environment will be steam app id this will be your steam's app id if you do not have one already you can go and type str480 otherwise you would just put your steam app id here go ahead and copy this line paste it and change app to game in process type steam dot run callbacks and also make sure you write steam dot steam init ex i'm going to create a new scene let's just call it level you can call it whatever you'd like let's make sure it's a regular node now in here add a multiplayer spawner assign the path to be the multiplayer spawner the auto spawn list will be empty now go ahead and create a script on that go ahead and add in a variable which will be an export variable it will be our player scene we'll set that to be a packed scene we can delete the process function we'll create a new function called spawn player and we'll pass in data we'll create a new variable which will be our player we'll get player scene dot instantiate and we will set the multiplayer authority to data and let's quickly create a dictionary which will hold all of our players so create a blank dictionary then we will store the players by their data and the player and then we will return the player and let's have a function that handles removing the player so function remove player we'll pass in the player data we'll find that player's data in that dictionary and we will queue free and then we will do players dot erase data and now in our ready function we will set our spawn function to our spawn player then we'll check if is multiplayer authority then we will spawn passing in one as the data we'll set multiplayer dot peer connected we'll connect that to the spawn function sorry dot connect and then we'll do multiplayer dot peer disconnected we'll connect that to remove player well i just have a simple player here that has a wasnd movement script and that's it let's go ahead and add in a multiplayer synchronizer in there we're going to add a property to sync select the player add in the position you can also do the rotation as well or any other property let's head over to our player script here we will reference our camera so control and drag that over let's just call it cam in our ready function, we'll set cam dot enabled. We'll set that to is multiplayer authority. And inside our physics process, we'll quickly check if not is multiplayer authority. And if it's not, we will return. So essentially what this does is it will check if we own the player. And if we do, we will make sure we view it through our camera. And also we cannot control other players. Now let's head over to our level. Inside our player scene in the multiplayer spawner, we'll just drag in our player.tscn. Now let's head back to our main scene. Let's create a new script. In here, we will add two variables, one being our lobby ID, which we'll just set to zero for now. And next will be our peer. So variable peer gets steam multiplayer peer dot new. Now let's quickly head back over to our 2D scene. I'll add in a button. This will be our host button. And we will connect that to our main script. So button pressed, main script. We can go ahead and delete our process function as we do not need it. Instead of our host button, type peer 
dot create lobby. We'll create it using our Steam multiplayer peer, and we will make it public. So lobby type public. Now we'll go ahead and set multiplayer dot multiplayer peer to the peer. Then we're going to want to go ahead and add in a new multiplayer spawner into our main scene, and we'll assign the spawn path to main. Let's go ahead and drag it over to our script, and I'll just call it ms. Let's go create a new function called spawn level class and data. We'll just pass for now. We'll set ms dot spawn function to spawn level. Now in our spawn level function, it's going to create a new variable, which will be the instantiation of the level. So load data as packed scene, and we will dot instantiate. And we'll just go ahead and return a. Now in our host button, we need to spawn this in by going ms.spawn. We need to reference our level.tscn. So drag that over and press play. And press host now. You'll see we spawn in our player. And we can also go ahead and hide our button. So host.hide. We need to do a few more things to actually fully set up the scene lobby. So we'll first create a function called on lobby created. We need to pass in the connection status and also the lobby ID. We'll check if connect and then lobby ID. Let's go to ID. To set the lobby's name, type steam dot set lobby data. We'll pass in the lobby ID. We want to set the name and you can call it the lobby whatever you would like. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I will pass in the steam dot get persona name, which will be our Steam's username, plus watch free s lobby. So in this case, it'll be gwiz's lobby. And finally, we need to set it to joinable. So steam dot set lobby joinable. Once again, passing in the lobby's ID and true. Now back in our ready function, we need to connect this by going peer dot lobby created dot connect to on lobby created. And to make sure your lobby is running, I'm just going to go ahead and print out the lobby ID. So make sure you have Steam open, press play, and now host, and you'll see we get our lobby ID. Now to join the lobby, go going to create a new function called join lobby, pass in the lobby ID, then we'll do peer.connect lobby, pass in that ID, and we'll set multiplayer dot multiplayer peer to peer. I'll we'll also hide the host button. So as of right now, if you host a game, you'll get the lobby ID and you'll be able to pass it to join lobby to join on a different computer. However, you don't want your players to have to send a big long string of random numbers to their friends every time they want them to join the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to list out all the available lobbies. It's going to create a new function called open lobby list. We don't need to pass anything in. We'll type steam dot add request lobby filter. This will be how uh, far you want the filter to go. So we'll just do worldwide for now. And then we'll go ahead and type steam dot request lobby list to request the lobby list. And now we need to list out all the lobbies that we receive. So function on lobby match list. We'll pass in lobbies. We'll loop through those lobbies. So for lobby in lobbies. We'll set a variable called lobby name to steam dot get lobby data. Let's pass in that lobby and get the name. Let's also get how many members are in the lobby. So mem count steam dot get num lobby members and just pass in lobby. And before we display these lobbies, I'm going to create a new scroll container. Show you that over here. And let's name it lobby container. I'll add in a VBox container. Let's call it lobbies. And now back in our script, let's create a new variable. Let's call it but. We'll set that to button dot new. Let's set that button text to be 
str of the lobby name combined with the player count. So we'll pass in the member count. Let's set the size to be a vector two of 100 by five. And we'll reference that view box that we created before. So dot add child, and we'll add the button as a child. And since we want to be able to join the lobby from this button, we'll go ahead and do button dot connect, click the pressed function to callable self. And we want to call the join lobby function. So join lobby. We want to bind this to the current lobby. And we also want to hide the lobbies list whenever we create or join a lobby. So dot hide and dot hide. And one thing I forgot to do earlier is inside the join lobby function, we'll set lobby ID to the ID. And finally up in our ready function, we'll connect this by going steam dot lobby match list. We'll connect it to on lobby match list. And let's also call the open lobby list function. And for first play, you'll see we'll get a list of lobbies. And one final thing we will do is we'll create a refresh list button. So we'll create a new button, call it refresh. Let's connect it to main. Let's go to reference the lobby container. We'll check if the lobby container dot get child count is greater than zero. Now we're going to loop through these children by going for n in the lobby container dot get children. And we will go ahead and type n dot q free to delete them. And I'm also going ahead and hiding it on the host and join. And I've gone and created a lobby on my laptop. So let's click refresh. We'll see my lobby. Let's join it. We'll take a second. And now I'm in my lobby. So if I move the player on my laptop, you'll see him moving here. And I can also move. And I've gone ahead and added a point of reference so you can actually see that both players can move. If you need further help, I have linked an example in the description down below. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this story helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.